Today, I'm going to show you how I set up my Obsidian for Zotacastin. If you are new here, my name is Darian, and in this channel, we talk about personal knowledge management and self-development. If you are interested in these topics, please consider subscribe. There are four areas that we're going to cover today. First is how I set up my vault. Second is how I sync files across devices. Third is how I name my notes. And last but not least is how I use templates. Without further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about a vault. A vault is a place on your computer that contains notes and settings in your system, such as themes, plugins, shortcuts, and more. To create a new vault, you can simply go to the Obsidian menu and click Create a new vault. This will create a new folder on your computer. Or you can create a new folder and then open that folder as a vault. You can have as many vaults as you would like, and I see many people have a vault for personal use and another one for a business use. But for me, I only have a single vault for everything related to personal knowledge management. Everything that I'm thinking about my company is also in here. But for the things that I would like to collaborate with my team, I normally use Notion for that. If you want your vaults to be synced across devices, you have two options. First is to use cloud syncing services such as Dropbox, Google Drive, or iCloud. And second is to use Obsidian Sync, which is a paid service. I personally never use Obsidian Sync, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, such as the ability to selectively sync only some settings across devices. I would leave you a link in the description down below for you to research more. Personally, I'm using iCloud service to sync my vault, and it had been working beautifully for me so far, except for the fact that it would create a duplicate daily note on a different device. In that case, I would have to delete the duplicate and edit on the original daily note. Now we have a vault and it is synced across devices, but now it's empty, so we have to create some notes. And here's how I name my notes. Let's review the types of notes we have to create. First are the literature notes and the references, which contain the information about the things we have consumed. Second are the permanent notes, which contain information about the things we have learned or the insights and ideas. Third are the fleeting notes, which contain anything that pop into our minds during the day. And the last one are hub notes, which are similar to index in the Zettelkasten system. You can find more information about hub notes in the link in the description. To distinguish each kind of note, I put an emoji in front of a note's name. In order to put an emoji, you can use a shortcut, or on a Mac, you can use Alfred snippet or system settings to quickly insert different kinds of emojis. If you don't like an emoji or you think it's a little bit too complicated, what you can do is you can use a letter to separate each kind of note. For example, you can use P for permanent note and use R for reference notes. The benefit of doing this is that every time you see the name of this note in the backlinks, you know what kind of note this is. If you liked what you've seen so far, please consider liking this video and hit subscribe. Now that you know different types of notes and how to name them, we have to actually create the notes using templates. The first step of using a template is to create a new folder that contains notes with different kinds of templates. Then go to the system settings and turn on daily notes and template in the core plugins. In those settings, you can tell Obsidian where to look for the templates for daily notes and other kinds of notes. In the daily note templates, I put journals tag to help organize my notes, weekly goals to help check in my weekly goals every single day, and another section for the rest of the information. In a permanent note template, I simply put the title of the note and also a place to link the note back to hub notes or other related notes. In the reference notes, I put a tag to define what kind of information this is, such as YouTube, books, name of a person, or a name of a concept. I also put other key information such as the name of the author, the created date, the source link, and ability to link back to the hub notes and other related notes. As you might notice, this is called metadata, which is a special format that can be used with another plugin called DataView. You don't have to worry too much about it for now, but just in case you are curious, I would leave a link in the description for you to learn more. 
The last is Hub Note Templates, which simply has the name of the Hub Note and ability to link to other Hub Notes and also other related nodes. You can go down into the link in the description to download all the templates that I show you today so that you can modify and use it for your own purpose. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you like what you've seen so far. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.